City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 12th of February, 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Good morning. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we extend this respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Blight in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, members. You can sit. <laughs> Thank you, members. Item three, there are no apologies or leave of absence tonight. Um, item four, confirmation of the minutes from the 29th of January uh, 2019. Moved by Councillor Martin. Could I have a second to Councillor Sims? Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the minutes at all? Yeah. Councillor Sims. Is there any other debate or corrections to the minutes, members? There being no corrections, I now ask you to vote in favour of a motion to confirm the minutes. Those in favour? Thank you, those against. That is carried. Um, item five, there are no deputations or forums to be heard this evening, and uh, neither are there any petitions to be received. It takes us to item 7.1, which are the recommendations of the committee, which was held on the 5th of February um, 2019. I'll seek a motion for each of the recommendations. Recommendation one, the Pontarian Deputy Lord Mayor. I saw your hand go up first. Second, Councillor no, Moran. No, no, I would like to move an alternative motion for me. And I believe I've got my hand Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Um, would you like to speak to me? I reserve my right. Thank you. Councillor Abraham today. Reserve my right. Councillor Moran, thank you. I move um, the original motion put to the committee by the, by the uh, administration. Uh, I look for a second. Councillor Martin. Just from a point of order, is this a direct, a direct negative to the existing motion? Thank you, uh, Dela. My um, advice is no. Councillor Moran, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, I think um, I thought Assam's, um, Councillor Abiyad's motion was very conciliatory, um, but in the week that we've had Councillor's to think. Councillor's Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Abiyad. Um, the Deputy Lord Mayor infers no seniority over any other councillor except when you're absent. So, I Councillor Abiyad's motion. Standing orders, Councillor I'm Mayor sorry, it's incorrect. It Mayor. conveys a completely misunderstanding of the role. Um, thank you, though, for. Um, well, just a point of order, Lord Mayor. It's in our standing orders very clearly that it stipulates 
any reference to a elected councillor as a board to mayor stand on is being a title very well aware. Like that. That's our tradition. And I really object to my uh, debate being interrupted to be corrected on such a minor point. Councilor if it is Moran. so important for Councillor Abiad, when all of us are on that board, uh, to be called this empty title, I will refer to him as the Lord Poobar, Deputy Lord Mayor forevermore now. It is ridiculous and pompous. Um, and has completely distracted me from what I was saying. I think my three minutes can start now, thank you. Um, honestly, honestly, it is the, yeah, I, can't, I just can't speak lightly enough of any people that do that. Um, the, um, the pontoon can't be activated, as our original report said. When Councillor Abiad, Deputy Lord Mayor, um, moved a motion that we go back to them and ask them. We're asking them to deliver something they can't deliver, something they've already told us they can't deliver. They can't deliver activation during the winter months. They said that in the report, if people had read it, and I, hope, I presume they have now before the council meeting. Uh, they were suggesting that it could be open to the public um, during those times. I don't think that would be very active, just to be open to sit on a cement block. Also, it is not DDA compliant. Um, and really shouldn't be used. So I think that uh, the time has come where the cost of removing it and building another, uh, remembering that they have it this, this festival, we're not doing anything till next year, um, that really it's time to bring it out. When we decided to give them an extra year for an extra festival, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abiad, swore on his, with his hand on his chest that he would never extended again and actually spoke directly to the proponents then saying this is it up that april 2019 i didn't bet any money that that would come true and i knew it would be extended there are no special circumstances the plaza is being renovated and they know, knew that uh, when they first put this in the um, river there are plenty of other places the festival of arts can have the run of the city the west end the parade ground uh, many other places would love to host their hub. One of the best hubs was the Red, Red Square, I think, on the festival, um, on the um, parade grounds, have it there again. It is merely a cost shifting, so these directors can put the cost on of rebuilding another one to the other. The festival usually moves its hub every every time when it was two yearly. Now they've decided to often do two at once. Well, they've had that now. Now we love the festival. We give them an enormous amount of money in our ratepayers' um, uh, rates because we do love the festival, but that doesn't mean we act stupidly. People do not like it there. They're upset. It's, it is the, um, the, the beautiful scene over uh, the river that billions of dollars have been spent um, the bridge, the oval, the new convention centre, and right sitting is there's something you wouldn't even have your own backyard. It is awful. Not one councillor here really wants it to stay there. Don't, I think this was an amber claim. I thought they, I think they just thought, well, look, we'll see if they can have it uh, one more time. It'd be very convenient for us. It has to come out at some stage. It comes out after, in my mind, it come, your ratepayers want you to take it out in April. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, this uh, amended motion, which was the original motion, um, is uh, steeped in a majority view in our community, and that is that the pontoon is ugly and it must go. Now, the amendment that came to us from Councillor Abbott, the Deputy Lord uh, Mayor, um, <laughs> the Deputy Lord Mayor, sorry, I got it all out in one sentence, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor was that um, something be done for its appearance for the aesthetics. And look, frankly, um, there's not much that can be done with it. Um, you know, a pig is a pig. You put a new dinner jacket on it, it's still a pig and it will be. It's pretty ugly. But the, the second matter that Councillor Moran raised is important. That is to say that that motion that was approved at the meeting of February 5th was preceded by a letter four days earlier, dated February 1st, from uh, the festivals ex explaining what they would do to activate that site. And what they say is they won't. Um, their expectation is it will be activated less 
than it currently has been. They say, as Councillor Moran said, nothing in winter. And then we'll activate it when it's already activated for things like Oz Asia, New Year's Eve, carols by candlelight. In effect, it's not going to have any activation. And I don't see what the point is when the festival centre has said to us, we can't activate it anymore. Give us your activation list. Are we actually going to believe it if they give us an activation list that wasn't available to us at that meeting on the 5th from a letter penned on the 1st? Of course we won't. This is one of those occasions where the administration's advice was sound. It said, don't do it. Just don't do it. Refuse to renew the lease. And this council, for some reason, said, oh, we won't do that. Uh, we're going to oppose it. We'll ensure that it stays in the water a bit longer by pretending that there's some point in the festival coming up with some kind of proposal. Look, the administration got it right. Nobody likes it, nobody believes it can be activated. We should just do the merciful thing and allow the festival centre to exit gracefully as the pontoon will at the end of April when the agreement finishes. Uh, I just don't see why it's not possible for this council to stick to a decision that was taken a long time ago and which has been reinforced by the administration's recommendation. That's the sort of stuff that confuse, confuses ratepayers when we're all over the place. The recommendation is clear, do not renew the lease. And it's reflected in Councillor Moran's amendment. And I just hope for the sake of this council's reputation that every one of you here approves that. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Hyde. I just have a question. Um, obviously, it's been a week since the committee passed or made this recommendation. Uh, do we have any idea of the Adelaide Festival's progress on putting their proposal together? How far advanced is it? Um, uh, you know, it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to pull the plug on it now. Obviously, I want to pull the plug on the damn pontoon. But um, if they put together half the work that they're going to give to us at the next meeting, I, I would be loath to sort of um, stop it now. Uh, to the CEO. Thanks, Claire. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, I'm not aware of progress, but we have asked them to attend committee next week and share um, what their plans are um, with committee next Tuesday. Would anybody else like to speak, members? Councillor Cross. Uh, as much as I agree that the pontoon has been a bit of a disaster in when activating it for commercial fans. I think the amendment, is it safe to say that the amendment was based on giving them a two weeks extension to get, come up with a proposal to what it would look like um, if they extended the lease. Um, now, I understand that, uh, that they were unable to um, activate it successfully because it was out of their scope. Right? And we weren't privy to all of that. So I was hoping that we could have given them the opportunity to um, you know, be able to present to us what, what that would look like. But um, now we're going back to the original amendment. I understand that this is going to, we have to make a decision right now in regards to, to leasing it. We can't bring up the, um, uh, the previous amendment in council. Um, Councillor, so this is a, an amendment, so we'll vote on this one first, okay. and then if this is not successful, then it goes back to the recommendation from committee. So at the moment, we're just um, looking at the amendment, which was the original rec recommendation for right. committee. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just want to make a quick comment. Uh, look, the motion that was recommended by committee did not support the lease. It purely just deferred the item for a period of time to give the last and final opportunity for the Adelaide Festival Centre to put a case to this council to why, after all the mistakes that have occurred, that this council will give it another opportunity. That is literally what that recommendation says. It doesn't say if tonight um, Councillor Moran's motion was not to be supported. It doesn't mean that it can't be reintroduced next week or the week after based on the information we will receive from the Adelaide Festival. All that this does is just provides for a state of execution between now and that period for them to provide all the information to us. If this council is not satisfied with the outcome of that process, then by all means, we will vote for it to be removed from the room. Members, are there any other speakers? Councillor Hyde. Uh, 
Uh, if there are no other speakers, Councillor Moran, sum up. Well, look, that all sounds very good, but if, has anybody actually gone down to have a look at the structure? There is nothing that you could do to make that rotting hub. It has concrete cancer, it is apparently listing, it is not DDA compliant. There is nothing. Put them out of their misery. Hassan, uh, Hassan saying, oh, oh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor right. is uh, saying that um, they might pull a rabbit out of the hat. The time to do that was when they asked for a lease and they gave us their best shot with the activation. Deputy Lord Mayor has bought them two weeks. What for? They know they can't do it. I wouldn't tr necessarily believe that, that if they're acting out of a sense of desperation, put something on paper. They didn't actually do what they promised to do this time or the time before. So why would they suddenly now with the decaying infrastructure be able to do something that's acceptable? Nothing on that has been acceptable to date, nothing. Even during the festival, it didn't work very well. They can't do it. They've done their best, poor things. Now, get it out. Don't, it's, it's, it's a pathetic, um, decision-making thing to say, I'm going to say no in two weeks, but I just want a bit more information so that I can have a bit more reason to say no. Put these poor guys out of their misery. They're not there beavering away and working out how to, how to have a plan to activate. They gave it in the report, nothing in winter. Nothing in winter, that's half the year. And the only time to be activated when the, when the banks are activated with other things. So look, let's just put put this to bed now. I think they expect that decision. Don't don't drag it out, drag the poor things in to go through our committee. Say no. Stick to the original agreement. We promised that this was a lot. We told them that last time. This is a gift to you, the festival, because we love you. But come April 2019, it's coming out. They said absolutely we'll be looking for another venue. So just stick to the agreement. How can anybody trust the council when we just don't stick to anything? All this ter last term I've been getting, and I know that particularly North Adelaide Central Council have been receiving complaint after complaint after complaint. Now this is the time to make a decision. Make it for goodness sake. You've got all the information. Thank you, members. We'll now vote on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that now becomes a substantive. Members, if I can. Oh. So that becomes the motion. Okay. Would anybody like to speak to the motion that is now before you? No? Back to you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up. Thank you. If I could ask for a vote, thanks. Those in favour? Those against? And division. Thank you. Uh, Council Moran has called division. All members of the vote are standing up. In favour, please stand up. Councillor Moran, Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Martin, Councillor Canol, Councillor Sims. Can I say it was lovely to see my council chamber working together in such a, uh, a, a wonderful way. Right, we will go on to recommendation number two, which is the productive economy discussion paper. If I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, a seconder. Councillor Kerra. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Kerra? Um, I'll speak to it just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, I did raise uh, some concerns about our submission at uh, committee uh, last week. I'm not going to reiterate those concerns uh, today. Um, I'd just like to say, just really as a comment, uh, as a new incoming councillor, um, I, I do suspect that this submission is going through partly because we simply really haven't had the time uh, to work through this, to work through the submissions, to provide input. Um, I, I, I do understand there, there are a lot of priorities, there's a lot of stuff that's a moving uh, feast at the moment for Council, but 
I do know that the call for submissions came out uh, in November 28 of last year. So really as a, as a, as a comment um, to, to, to administration, documents of this nature in future, I think a new council will want to be able to uh, provide submissions to it, will want to be able to talk through uh, these sorts of documents within a workshop environment. So can I just say as a comment, uh, where possible, let's try and, and do that in future. Thanks. CEO, can I get, take that as an undertaking? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerrin. Would anybody else like to speak to the motion before you? If not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor. Right, summed up. Uh, if you'd like to vote, those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Uh, members, recommendation three is the 2018-2019 quarter two finance report. Could I have a move for the motion? Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Could I have a seconder? Councillor Knoll. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Knoll. Uh, members, would anybody like to speak to the report or the motion? Sorry. Yeah, just Thank a, you, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, a, a very quick question. At committee last week, the administration undertook to come back with a response um, uh, to the question that was raised about what was the basis for the 4% increase in rates that was shown. It's on, or was on page 51 or 54, and I hadn't received an answer. I wonder if it's possible to help. That's true, the CEO. Thanks, Steve. Through to Lord Mayor, in, in essence, the increase in rates was due to the assumption within the current um, planning in relation to the 3.3%. Um, so it was in relation to our current forecast in relation to the rates. I can bring, bring back further breakdown of that and actually provide that through to you as an update from tonight in future. Are we able to determine whether that's through increase in property valuations, uh, increase in rates, or um, as in the rate of the dollar, or, or is the assumption that, that, that there won't be an increase in the rate of the dollar? Um, all of the assumptions currently contained within it are without an increase in the rate of the dollar. So it is about valuations and growth. Thank you. Thank you, members. Uh, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to the move. Councillor Hyde, summed up. If we could please vote on the motion, those in favour, those against. That is carried. Uh, recommendation four, uh, which is the delivery plan for 2018-2019. If I could have a mover. <coughs> sorry, sorry members, if I could have a mover. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Hyde. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? No. <laughs> Councillor Hyde? Do any other members like to speak to it? No, Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, just before I go to item five, um, I just want to uh, talk to procedural uh, for a moment. Um, for the items like this where we as council are specific items to business for inclusion on the LGA ordinary and annual general meetings or the National General Assembly of the Australian Local Government Association, the normal process is that we would seek input from all members outside of the meeting and then these submissions are collated uh, into one report for consideration at committee uh, as they were last week. Um, for the April uh, Ordinary General Meeting, there's a discussion at committee about bringing submissions in as motions on notice. Hence, Councillor Dr Donovan has done so in this instance, which we'll get to later on the agenda. Um, please note though, members, that in future, uh, we'd like to make sure that the usual process is followed and so that the request for submissions will be made outside the meeting and then collated and brought into committee. So. The process I think that we've been through uh, in a general rule has been an e-news to council members, then a follow-up email if required, um, admin is there to assist, it's included in a report, then goes to committee uh, for discussion and a recommendation and then into council. Um, 
So I would look to the recommendation and ask if there uh, is an appetite from members to make a, an amendment to the motion on notice. Uh, being that we delete uh, number four. So if I could have a seconder. Uh, Councillor Dr Donovan, um, would you like to speak to it, Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, right? Yeah, um, Councillor Donovan, thank you. Councillor Moran. Can I ask, sorry, can I ask what that means, that, that anybody can put a motion up from Council and we don't get to decide whether it should go up? No, what, what, what it means is um, they'll all, so all members will be asked if there's anything that they want to put up and we'll collect it and put it in a report so it comes into committee and then it'll be a recommendation. The, the process of bringing them in separately as motions, yes. so it's just it's yeah, just going yeah, back. So yeah. still get to decide. Absolutely. So you will get to see and decide and debate or discuss any of the uh, suggested um, items for discussion that, but they'll come in through committee. Okay. Are, are members clear on that? Are we good? Great. Um, would anybody else like to speak to? The motion. If not, Deputy Lord Mayor, summed up. Summed up. Those in favour. Those against. I'm voting in favour. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, that is carried. Uh, thank you, members. Um, now, I, the next item is uh, as per item two. We need to appoint a council delegate. So, and also a deputy uh, council delegate. So, I, I seek nominations from the floor, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Dr. Donovan. Thank you, Councillor Doctor. Are you happy to accept the nomination? Yes, I am. Thank you. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Um, if I could actually ask for a nomination of the Deputy Delegate as well. I'd like to nominate um, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination as Deputy <laughs> Delegate? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Moran, did you? Uh, Want to nominate them? Okay. Um, so we have two nominations. We have Councillor Dr. Donovan as our delegate, council delegate, and we have Councillor Hyde as the deputy council delegate. If I could have a mover for that. Thank you, Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Um, would anybody like to speak to? Would you like to speak to that, no, Councillor? Councillor. Would any other councillors like to speak to that? If not. If we can then go, oh, sorry, would you like to sum up, Councillor Moran? Sum up. Thank you. Uh, those in favour? Thank you, those against? Thank you, Councillor Donovan. I hope you enjoy the ordinary <laughs> general meeting of the LGA. <laughs> So, councillors, I'll now go to item eight on the agenda. We have two items, 8.1 being the nomination of the members of Garrow. This is a report to note. Could I have a mover, please? Uh, Councillor Moran and a seconder. Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to this? No, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, would any other members like to speak to it? If not, back to the, the mover, Councillor Moran. Summed up. Thank you. Members, uh, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Item 8.2 is the uh, 2019 LGA Ordinary General Meeting. Uh, this is for approval. If I could have a member to uh, move the motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Martin, the second. And Councillor Sims, we have you to second that. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Reserve my right. Councillor Sims? Reserve my right. Did any other councillors wish to speak to the motion? No, if not, Councillor Martin? Like oh, thank you, Councillor Martin. If I could have a vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. <coughs> Item nine uh, is questions on notice. I have no questions on notice. Item 10, are there any questions without notice? Councillor Martin. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the Stadium Management Authority told ABC Radio yesterday morning in a one-hour program, which I understand you were invited but were unable to attend, Lord Mayor, but the SMA uh, said not one blade of grass will be impacted by the construction of the Adelaide Oval Hotel because it will access the proposed cons construction site via the concrete-created um, southern entrance and uh, equipment plant and machinery will traverse using the concreted apron in front of the East Gate area. Could the administration advise if the use of these uh, concrete areas will require the approval of the City of Adelaide as they're outside the core lease area? And uh, I would assume, and I, I hope there'll be some confirmation, uh, in the licensed area, which is made available to the state government. So. The pathway is in the licensed area. Will it will it require, if it is, the approval of council? Uh, just before I go to administration, um, I wasn't invited on the program. I did have a call from the ABC, but I was in a meeting, so uh, they did call me to see if I would like to make comment. What did they do? Sorry, I wasn't actually invited to oh, join the panel uh, per se, just to make a comment, as was, uh, um, I think, um, uh, Stephen Mulligan. Um, if I could go to administration for comments on that. Yeah, three of them. At this stage, we've not received a proposal on which to uh, respond to nor consider. Um, I have heard what you have heard. Um, what I need to do is take that on notice tonight and provide a response once we've had a look at the specifics of what was said. Um, but I would imagine that we'll be requiring council approval. Let me check that and come back to you. Sorry, I missed the last bit. Like you imagine. I anticipate there would be approval required um, to use that hard apron that you're talking about, but I'll need to check that information and come back to you, unless any of the directors know. Yeah, we're all saying we need to take it on notice to come back to you with the correct information. And, and if it is a licensed area and requires approval, it would be my correct assumption that that will come to this council to approve, or not approve, is the case maybe. Yeah, we would normally deal with it as a normal normal development application. Um, so again, I'll take that on notice because, yes, I'd need to be correct in the information I provide to you. Okay. Well, uh, from my point of view, it would be great if it came to the elected body. Noted. Thank you. Are there any other questions without notice? If not, there are four motions on notice. Uh, item 11.1, Council Moran. Motion on notice. Oh, yeah. uh, I move. Um, Council Moran, sorry, your microphone. I move as printed. Sorry, I move as printed. A request the Council's reference group ask the EOI proponents of 88 O'Connell Street to consider that the site be used by the SMA for the development of a hotel. And can I look for a seconder? Councillor Martin. I uh, didn't Moran. quite mean to create such, uh, such um, upset and uh, the CEO has actually written this motion and I presume finds that acceptable. Look, really, I just wanted to get it out there. If we don't want the um, SMA to build the um, hotel at the Oval, and their three principal needs for it is an income stream, something that services the Oval, and something that uh, reinvigorates Melbourne Street and O'Connell Street. Now, a lovely hotel on the Lacornu site um, would surely be superior to something bolted onto the stairwells of the Oval. It is a 10 minute walk and if a tram extension was put up there, which the plan to do would be a five minute train, train. So it is very proximate to the Oval. In fact, probably the only green field site um, that would be of use. Uh, the third one is nothing would invigorate Melbourne Street and O'Connell Street than actually building it in O'Connell Street. Um, I'm not suggesting we gift it to them. I'm we're looking for um, partnerships with this. I spoke to uh, nobody that is in our EOI process, but I spoke to people in development game, and they said if the government said, okay, we're going to build on the, the Cornu site, 
people that have given expressions of interest for a $42 million hotel that would take up a quarter of the site would be absolutely thrilled. Far from, as I've been told repeatedly via email, that I've thrown, thrown a bomb in the process, it would be an enormous positive incentive for some really good developers to get even more involved. And I'm sure the developers that have expressed interest would be thrilled at the government pouring $42 million into 25% of the site. Nevertheless, I realise that there's strong opposition from some councillors um, and uh, I don't understand it. Um, I'm glad the, it's gone out into the ether. This hotel may well fall over. Uh, things are coming out every day. They did get a bank loan from the Commonwealth Bank. No, it wasn't contingent on the, uh, the end of the year uh, loan promised by the government. Uh, we'd all forgotten about the original con contract that said no public money will go into the Oval until the end of 2019. So there's a rather sneaky way of getting around it. Public opinion is really against it um, from what I can see. Um, and it probably won't work and uh, because it's in a noisy spot bolted to the side of the road, but a lovely, gracious boutique hotel on the La Cordon site would be great. I don't really need this motion to get up, but I'd like you to vote for it, of course, um, because I think the SMA, if they need a plan B, we are the plan B. And it can't possibly be. If we had a decision to make tonight, if we could wave a wand and say, let's build the hotel on the Lacornu side, surely nobody here would say, that's a terrible idea. We'd all say, what a fantastic idea. So it is just an idea. It won't upset the EOI process. I'm a little alarmed that some people in this council, elected body, appear to know a lot about the EOI process, and I'll be asking that confidentially to be explained to me. Uh, so that's all it is. It's a thought bubble. It's a suggestion. If they are looking for a place, they really decide that it's the, the, the idea of bolting it to the side. It's got too hot to handle, too unpopular electorally, which I suspect might be dawning on some now. Um, then we have offered an alternative. So often this council's accused of being negative, blocking, stopping, and yet it seems the very people that are progressive are the people that are blocking and stopping often. Um, so I'm suggesting an alternative. They may not take it up, they might. But wouldn't it be terrific if they did? That was right on time. That was brilliant. Right Councillor Martin. <laughs> Councillor Kerr. Uh, I thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'd just like to take the opportunity at this juncture to uh, commend Councillor Moran on uh, the work that she's done uh, on this matter so far. I think it, re it has been a real uh, rallying point uh, for, for, for a lot of the other councillors, on top of the work done by yourself, Lord Mayor, not to take away from that. But, but I think that Councillor Moran has really stuck her neck out in a way that I think ought to be commended. Um, I think it's been it's been really good for us, particularly for uh, speaking as a new councillor. I think that um, in this instance, um, you know, it, it's it it is incumbent on us to do everything we can uh, to effectively monetise an asset that we have at our disposal. Um, I think that in in commercial property world, you know, some flexibility around an EOI is not unusual at all. Um, had the timing of this been better, this would really have been a no-brainer. Um, however, I can understand there are there are constraints around probity and around the EOI that, that have been voiced. Um, but but I, my comments, uh, I mean, apart from that, my comments about Councillor Moran and about the gist of this and the and the sentiment behind this, um, I think stand. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, any other speakers? Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I join Councillor Kira in commending uh, Councillor Moran for her advocacy um, on this. Um, but I do uh, support Councillor Moran's um, motion. I, to echo uh, Councillor Moran's comments, I don't think there is any harm at all in Council simply making a suggestion around um, how this site could be used. Um, the uh, Stadium Management Authority and the State Government have found themselves um, really caught in a storm of controversy as a result of this toxic hotel plan. It's a storm of controversy of their own making. 
Um, and what Councillor Moran is doing through this motion, and should it be supported by this council, what this council would be doing is providing an alternative for the SMA and the state government to consider. I see no harm in us doing that. We have a, a site that is sitting there vacant. We're going through an EOI process at the moment, and this is simply saying, hey, let's look at this, and we encourage them to put something forward. I don't think that's controversial. And if anything, I think it shows this council being willing to work and find a solution. Um, the reality is, of course, this hotel being positioned in the parkland is completely inappropriate for a range of reasons. Um, and uh, it's a unique proposal in that it's been condemned by every sector of the community. Um, but the O'Connell Street site is a totally different proposition. And actually, residents, ratepayers, businesses, they want to see um, this area being activated and they want to see something that's going to bring more people into uh, North Adelaide. And uh, I think this is a way of us doing that. So I, I see no harm in um, us supporting this motion and I'd encourage you to do the same. Councillor Kouros and then Deputy Lord Mayor. I just have some questions. Um, so uh, the administration or CEO has particularly recommended not to go and not to, to to take this on is that correct CEO? three of them i just want to make two comments um the administration management and myself often at times uh, assist council members to form and prepare motions for being on notice that doesn't necessarily mean they're endorsed it's just assisting a council member to get a motion formed up to come to council that's the first point secondly the report is fairly clear uh, after talking to our property advisor that we don't recommend this, this is the way to go forward. That's in the, in the response to the motion. And how far away are we from knowing uh, what the uh, BL lines coming through? Um, are they going to be presented? Um, that's something I'll ask Steve to respond to, thanks. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the project reference group met this week. Um, they've actually taken the input and feedback from the evaluation team and currently we're seeking permission of the chair of the committee to have a special committee meeting along with another strategic property matter on the 23rd of February. Can we bring that through? Yeah. So if, we, if this gets taken off, we go in and request they take on the consideration of a hotel to be built there. Would that delay the process? I would suggest that if we, if the response as it's recommended by appropriate order would not be appropriate for us to say as part of the EOI process. However, part of this evaluation will then move us into stage two, which is a request for detailed proposal. And along with other considerations on that day, council could propose its preferred direction in relation to that as well. So that could delay anything further? Is that what you're oh. No, okay. Um, so um, uh, in consideration of that is, uh, it, I guess I just want to know if is it uh, we don't know if there's going to be a hotel or anything on there, um, but that could be part of the proposal. Is that is that right in the EOI anyway? Oh, no, we're not meant to know that. It's, there could be there could be a range of opportunities that come through in the next phase of the. So EOI respondents have responded. They've been evaluated and they'll be brought to you for a workshop of decision making. Um, that is an EOI stage. You obviously then go through to a request for detailed proposal, in which case you will pull through elements that council would like to focus on with the EOI respondents. So as part of that, we could. One of the overriding principles, I guess, within this is whilst it would be part of the natural part for stage two, that there could be discussions. The issue would be the timing of that in relation to the needs of the other parties on the SMA. Thank you, Councillor Cross, Deputy Lord Mayor, and then Councillor Abraham. Look, I'll speak briefly for this, Lord Mayor. Uh, Council's position has been very clear with regards to uh, not supporting uh, the project uh, as it is currently at the Adelaide Oval Ground. We've made that position public and very clear. Um, the one part of this that is concerning is around council probably advises the project um, that it wouldn't be appropriate for us to consider this as part of the process. That's one part. The other part I've got issues with is over the last two terms of council, we have done nothing but whinge and point the finger at the terrible works of the SMA. And the last thing I want to do is be in business with them. I don't want to sell them a piece of land. I don't want them in North Adelaide. I don't want them to manage a hotel in North Adelaide and create the drama that they're going to create up there. So even if they are interested, I don't know if this council should be interested, given the track record of the SMA, in gifting them and putting them in a neighbourhood that we all cherish and consider as a prime main street. 
Uh, so for me, look, take the probity fact out of it. I don't know if this council should ever be in business with the SMA, given how they play, how they play the business currently. Uh, also, not to mention, we have already heard from the minister and the SMA that they're not interested in this. They've, met, they've put it in the public arena already. It was a statement that was clear out there. I appreciate Councillor Moran's intent on this, but if this was potentially delivered pre expressions of interest, they might have been an opportunity there to discuss, but it's very difficult given probity advice around EOI and also the messaging we're going to put out to the market around expressions of interest. Once it's out there, once there's a process, I think it's very difficult when it becomes commercial and confidence for this council to introduce new variables. And I think that, that is the challenge for me in supporting this. So I would not be supporting this motion. Uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Corus, can I just ask you to turn your microphone off? Thank you. Councillor Aberdeen, what's your name? Uh, Lord Mayor, just briefly, I'd like to make a couple of comments to this. I do appreciate um, Councillor Moran's intent, but I would like to remind um, all members here that um, uh, the Adelaide Oval Hotel and Eddie O'Connell are two separate items, they're two separate projects. Uh, and uh, uh, also, uh, I just find it interesting that. Um, Previously, Councillor Moran mentioned that um, uh, we are to take administration's uh, uh, recommendations and advice, but in this scenario here, there has been a probity issue and we're not taking that on board. So uh, I would like to remind all elected members of that too. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, uh, Lord Mayor, there seems to be some misunderstandings around here. What's occurring in respect of 88 O'Connell at the moment is that we are entering into an expressions of interest process. Parties who are interested in being part of a process to develop that site are invited to submit their credentials together with details about how they might go about financing something. No designs have been submitted, no designs have been invited, and if any party has submitted a design or any design component, then I'll be cross because that's not what was asked for. So let's be clear, we're simply asking who's out there, put your hand up, we'd like to talk to you. In that context, Councillor Moran's proposal is quite simple. She's saying, well, look, you know, take this into consideration as well. Now, Lord Mayor, uh, probity and the mention of the word probity here uh, are entirely inappropriate in this uh, context. In fact, the only breath in which you would mention probity would be the one where you were talking about the way the SMA went about financing this deal. There's some probity problems there, let me tell you. No one can forget that. And frankly, I, I don't care if we're doing business with the SMA. It's not an issue. We are already. Uh, everyone seems to forget that we are, in fact, the landlord to enable the SMA to have that stadium operating in that place. So it's just a nonsense to say, let's have nothing to do with them. They are business partners of ours, and they will be for the next 100 years, or what's left, anyway, of that 100-year deal. Um, Lord Mayor, it is a fantastic idea for North Adelaide. It is the only thing that the people of North Adelaide identified in the public consultation process where we went out and asked them what they wanted to see on that side. It is the only thing about which everyone has agreed. They wanted a hotel because a good quality hotel would bring lots of patronage for hospitality, for businesses, for restaurants, for cafes. All of those things would prosper by having a hotel on that site. If it is on the SMA site, and, and let me be clear about this, everyone needs to understand, just as patrons who enter that oval to watch a game of football are milked of every dollar for $10 pies, or what is it, $10 beers and $8 pies, every person who stays in that hotel will be milked for every other dollar they've got through the hospitality venues on the site. They'll even be dragging them onto the roof of the oval to do the, the roof walk just to increase their return. Now, the hotel sited in North Adelaide would see that any investment that uh, visitors make in our economy has a good chance of landing in a community, a business community that deserves it. And on that basis, I would think that my fellow councillors would support this. We're actually about supporting ratepayers in North Adelaide and the city, not about supporting the SMA, and we should be bending over backwards to see what we can do to assist that outcome. CEO, did you wish to comment? Yeah, Steve, can you help me? 
um, through you, Lord Mayor. Just to um, go back on a couple of the comments there, if I could count. So in relation to the expression of interest process, the expression of interest went out last year and actually closed to market on the 30th of November. So there have been respondents and people have chosen to engage or not to engage based, based on the EOI process that we put to market and has closed. So that process is through the evaluation. So at this stage, it was a strong advice of our independent external property advisor, who we've employed given the nature of the same thing to do on a number of our larger scale projects, that it wouldn't be appropriate to um, address this in the EOI stage, hence my comments earlier about the time. Lord Mayor, I'm puzzled. Don't the guiding principles for that site say that we as a council want to see a hotel on that site? Through you there, one of the areas of activation around there was the potential for that a, a range of other uses as well. The issue of probity is not about the outcome. The issue of probity is about the process that has been employed in an open and transparent process in the public. So we have actually started the process, we've closed the process, and we're in an evaluation criteria. So the strong advice of the external consultant is not to push this into the AI stage. Well, please understand this, uh, the SMA doesn't understand it. Um, Councils, if I can just um, make a comment. Um, I think we all understand what Council Moran is trying to do with this motion. Um, and I do also believe that we've given it some good airtime through the media. Um, so those proponents who have responded to the OI are, are, are actually ad, uh, advised that, you know, A, there's an SMA is trying to build a hotel and that we have a development on that site. Um, I think they could put two and two together if they wish to. Um, again, the, uh, the minister and the SMA have been very clear in their response to that through the media that they're not interested in building outside of the core area of the hotel. Um, and uh, and we also need to listen to our own property advice. But I would actually just say that I do totally understand Councillor Moran's intent with this, and I hope that those uh, proponents who are out there that may be interested will have heard that. Are there any other speakers to the motion? If not, I'll go to Councillor Moran. I'm disappointed to hear the, the CEO's comments. I actually had written three motions on notice before um, I didn't ask um, administration help with my motion. I had perfectly good motions uh, there and was told that they were unacceptable because of probity. And the CEO offered, and I gave him permission, to write a motion. So it's very disappointing when my motions have a red line through them, the administration offers to write me one. I think the presumption there is that I presume that the CEO would write a motion that wasn't ultra vires, wasn't against probity. So I am very disappointed on that. Um, everything that said, has said has been interesting. Um, it has given air time. It's a very sad council that, that just just governs uh, through the media, but sometimes that's absolutely necessary. We're at a very early stage here. The hotel was, was one of the most universally agreed upon because that's the thing they liked in the mattress design when the Sheraton was gonna be there. So when we attended all the uh, meetings in North Adelaide, first thing they wanted was green space and a five-star hotel. All I'm suggesting, this isn't mandatory, all I'm suggesting is that when the, um, the, the, the front runners get together, we say, how about having another crack at the SMA? Of course the SMA is saying no now. They've still got a rush of blood to their head that they might better get the oval bolted to the thing. But there may come a time where they are looking for an alternative and we should leave that door, not just a chink, wide open. I absolutely don't agree with the advice from the probity, uh, independent probity officer. I absolutely think it's wrong. I think it's political and I'm very disappointed in it and I will be speaking to the administration tomorrow about that. Um, I think this is a good idea uh, to say that, oh God, we, the process, we must get that. Don't let the process get in the way unless it's illegal we should continue with a good idea. The property officer is not saying it's illegal, he's just saying he'd rather we didn't do it. Well, I, I'm, I know I'm gonna to have to be satisfied with just getting it out into the ether, thanks very much to the um, wonderful work of our journalists. Um, but it would be really good if this council wasn't afraid 
when a man said, um, I always advise people to follow the recommendations of council, clearly this is only his third meeting. I've said previously speaking. I really, really, rarely, um, when I don't agree, I don't agree. I never slavishly follow it, and neither should you. It is their recommendation and their advice. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. I vehemently disagree with this advice, and it's the process is getting in the way of a good outcome. Members, I'll now ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? That motion is lost. Item 11.2, Councillor Dr Donovan, motion or notice? Would you like to? Happy to move as printed. Uh, looking for a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry, I think just a few hands went up at the same time. Uh, Councillor Donovan, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I, uh, I'm putting this forward to the LGA because, of course, within our own strategic planning, many times we've spoken to the fact that an integrated, safe and accessible uh, transport, transport network is what is essential for us to move toward our goals of being one of the healthiest and most livable cities. Um, and for us to adequately achieve that uh, network, it will be very helpful for us to be able to collaborate across the LGAs, particularly those surrounding, as the hub of the hub and spoke, um, for us to be able to work with the surrounding LGAs and across the state to be thinking not only about um, standard road processes that are already underway, but to be thinking about what's the innovation opportunity that's coming up, how can we work with other council areas to be thinking much more strategically and long term, not just on um, the standard as is current model, but to be thinking about how we can improve the system and how we can, of course, look to some of the innovation that's occurring internationally that can really maximise the outcomes for our city as well as for our state. So I really commend this motion uh, to the council and hope that I'll have the support of the chamber. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? I'll just briefly, I'll speak in support of this. Um, it feels to me that it was written by a doctor. <laughs> it's very prescriptive, which is fantastic. And I think at the same time, from an LGA perspective, sorry, Lord Mayor. Uh, sorry, sorry, Councillor, um, there's some noise coming from the room. Uh, members in the gallery, um, if I could ask you please to turn off whatever is making noise. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Apologies. Um, so I'll just speak in support of it. Um, and um, I'm guessing uh, Council Dr Donovan will be presenting this motion to the AGM or to the LGM. Um, Councillor Sims. Just um, very briefly, Lord Mayor, I do want to uh, commend Councillor Donovan for putting this forward. Um, I think this is a really great opportunity for us to work with other councils in the region to address some of these really important uh, issues. And um, I look forward to that happening through the LGA. Would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Dr Donovan to sum up. Summed up. Councillors, if you would like to vote on motion, those in favour? Thank you, those against. That motion is carried. 11.3, uh, uh, Councillor Dr Donovan, uh, your motion on notice. Happy to again move as printed. This is the refugee one. I'd just like to declare a conflict of interest, Lord Mayor, actual, and I'll excuse myself. Yeah, you have to state what the conflict is. Uh, I work for a federal government MP. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. <laughs> uh, Councillor Sims, are you happy to second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Would you like to stand and speak to your motion? Um, I think it's fairly uh, self explanatory, having read through for everyone who has read through the motion. Essentially, I'll, I'll draw to the fact that. Um, as noted in the administration comment, on 27th of February 2018, City of Adelaide became the first capital city in Australia to become a welcoming city, building on our status as a refugee welcome zone, to commit to welcoming all ethnically diverse communities. 
as a local government, it is our role to advocate on behalf of our community. So this is a federal government program, but we can be effective advocates for ensuring that this program is, is doing what it is supposed to do. And that, when it was first announced, it was set up to ensure that there was a sustainable model that would minimise costs to government, increase the chances of successful integration and settlement outcomes. And what we know from all of the international examples that are currently working well is that when, with a couple of little tweaks to the current federal government program, we can, we can significantly improve the outcomes. And those little tweaks are to ensure that it is more affordable and to ensure that uh, it becomes not simply that we are um, offering these places within the humanitarian quota, but to offer it in addition to. And the, the gold standard from Canada shows that when we make these tweaks, uh, we get a much more effective program that leads to those refugees being better supported, having better outcomes in terms of that community support, their ability to um, learn, like, learn local languages faster, to get a job faster, to be healthier and happier within the community. So I would hope that I have the full support of the council in ensuring that we can be one more of the councils. There's already 25 councils across Australia that have put forward a similar motion and are moving forward with this support, being effective advocates for their community. So I would sincerely hope that I have the, the full support of the, this chamber to be that next council, to show the support, to ensure that we tweak this, uh, we move toward requesting that we tweak this, um, this program, which is already in place, to make it more effective and get the outcomes that it was intended to, to move toward. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Simpson, did you want to speak? Um, members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? If not, oh, you would like to. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I just want to put on record my support for um, this motion. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Donovan that, you know, this really is a core business for the Council in terms of advocating um, for action on an issue like this. Um, I know the City of Adelaide has a long-term goal around wanting to attract more people to our city um, and uh, this is a way for um, us to do that. Um, and it's also recognising an opportunity to improve um, a program that's going to provide more pathways, safer pathways, um, for refugees to come to our country. Um, and of course, you know, I look at uh, what I consider to be a, a real blight on our country um, and that is the a moral uh, immigration process that we currently have in place. So this is an opportunity to um, look at an alternative um, and to give more pathways for people to come here. Um, so I'm, I'm very supportive of that. I see there are some people from um, Amnesty International here in the room and I do want to acknowledge their good work as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah, I just want to make a quick uh, comment. Look, I'll be supporting this um, uh, as a person, uh, as a councillor at the time that moved that we adopt the refugee status as a city. Um, I'm quite passionate about it, but at the same time, it's things that what we can do as a council is one thing, and what we ask the federal government to do is something different. I do think that this is outside the core business of council, but it's a letter and it's something that we can potentially advocate for. But I think the bigger piece here, Lord Mayor, is for us to have an opportunity as a council to talk about population growth. Uh, and to talk about the ways we can attract more people to our city, be it that some of those aspects will be at a federal arena, at a state arena, and we have a role to play in that advocacy space, but this isn't core business. And this is something we need to do on the side and still do, it's important, but I don't consider it to be core business of council. Thank you. Any other speakers to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Dr. Dunn. Summed up. Thank you. Um, if I could ask you now to vote those in favour, as against, that is carried. Uh, 11.4, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, the motion has been distributed, so I don't propose uh, reading it. Um, I'll look for a seconder. So, Councillor Sims. Okay, thank you. Look, I've, uh, I've previously uh, thanked uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor for his role as Chair of the Australia Day Council in South Australia uh, for inviting Ghana people to lead our Australia Day parade here in Adelaide last month uh, with a banner that said, change the date. Um, and I must say, uh, for me, uh, it was an emotional moment because I, I looked at the banner and I looked at the parade 
And it occurred to me it wasn't a hollow gesture because as I looked up, I could see uh, on the official stand the Governor of South Australia and his wife applauding. I could see you, Lord Mayor, and your partner applauding. I could see Councillor Abiyad uh, applauding along with his partner. It was a, a truly emotional time and a moment, I think, when uh, the Australia Day uh, Council, led by Councillor Abiyad, um, uh, set the bar for this city um, uh, to go a step further. And before I get to that, let me just say, uh, I was truly delighted too that the Australia Day Council had invited to the Australia Day function all of the people who participated in that parade. That was sensational to be able to talk to the Ghana who were in the parade carrying that banner and to hear from them what their aspirations were for Australia Day, about how it should be celebrated and when it might be celebrated. And let me tell you, Lord Mayor, uh, from the number that I spoke to, there are as many views in the Ghana community as there are within uh, the rest of the community. But look, I, I commend Councillor Abiyad again and you, Lord Mayor, for the uh, example that you showed not only on that day, but subsequently, and I note that you both use Ghana language whenever you can at official functions, it demonstrates an empathy with the Ghana people that really is a, a powerful thing to do. And I thank you for that. Um, the motion I'm not going to talk to um, at length, except to say that uh, it's not proposing that this council, like uh, some other councils have controversially done, leap forward and say, we're changing the date or we're not going to observe Australia Day. It is simply asking the Ghana people with whom we have empathy, for whom we have respect, what do you think? How do you think we should deal with this issue of Australia Day? Should, should the date be changed? Should the way we celebrate it be changed? What are your views? What, what does the Ghana people uh, of this state think about uh, Australia Day? Um, and as such, it does nothing more than pay them the respect that they deserve before we ever embark on a discussion of any sort within this council. So let me be clear, we are asking the Ghana people who are members of this council's reconciliation committee to consider the issue and perhaps to report to this council. Nothing will happen unless this council determines it will happen. But what we will have done will have been to empower the Ghana people to ask a community, what do you think? And, and for us, that's a huge step. It's a small step, but it is a huge step. And I would urge members to support this motion Ask the Ghana people, ask the Reconciliation Committee, the body that council set up, which is made up of Ghana people and councillors. What do you think about this issue? And advise this council. Uh, councillors, um, councillors, if I may, just by way of background, thank you, Councillor Martin, for uh, your sharing your sentiments um, and your congratulations to uh, the Australia Day Council for that, and it was, um, a, a wonderful day. Um, look, just by way of background for uh, those members who are newer to council, um, the, mem the Indigenous members of our Reconciliation Committee ha have not changed, so they're the same members. And the reason I say that is because um, it would only be three of us in the room who may remember uh, that we previously asked the Reconciliation Committee to consider Australia Day and uh, they resolved, this is in September 2017, they resolved um, to advise Council uh, that it recognises the impact of Australia Day celebrations on all members of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal communities and the committee therefore advises Council that they meet with the Australia Day Council of South Australia to discuss the potential for additional processes and protocols that need to be added to the Australia Day activities and events, including all citizenship ceremonies. These protocols should better recognise the history of Aboriginal peoples prior to European settlement and firstly provide an appropriate welcome to country. Um, as a result, the Australia Day Council, uh, the City of Adelaide, the Reconciliation Committee and members of the Ghana community um, have worked together to better integrate um, appropriate Aboriginal protocols and processes into the Australia Day activities that I referred to beforehand and also into our citizenship ceremonies within the City of Adelaide. 
Um, so in doing so, we can ensure that all Australians, whether they be new citizens or have lived here for a while, uh, have a better understanding of that Aboriginal history and culture. Um, my, I guess what I'm just asking uh, in by, by uh, telling members this by way of background is um, I'm not uh, entirely sure that we need to take it back to the Reconciliation Committee, given that we've already taken it to members and that they have given us that recommendation that that's the, the avenue through which they want to work. Um, and it's because it predated this council, I just thought I'd put that on the floor for members. Are there any other members that wish to speak to the motion? Uh, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Sim, sorry, I wasn't sure. No, that's fine. That, okay. Thank you. Um, look, I just want to clarify a couple of things. I thank um, Councillor Martin for his uh, comments with regards to the works um, that we've conducted recently. Uh, this is a very um, sensitive issue, and this is something that requires a significant amount of engagement with our First Nations people that deserve our respect. I think the recognition of the day will never change, and I hope that no matter what happens, that the 26th of January will remain a day in Australia on a public holiday calendar where we recognise something. I think what we need to acknowledge very quickly is what we celebrate on Australia Day today is what we've become as a nation, not necessarily how we started as one. And there's been a significant amount of work that we have done with the Reconciliation Committee. And I know personally myself over the last eight years that I've been involved with the Australian Council of Mayor, that there's been a significant amount of work and engagement. It took the better part of three and a half years to be able to get our First Nations people to lead this parade. And the whole focus of that exercise was to provide an opportunity democratically. What we celebrated on Australia Day is our democratic nation, is our rights, is our freedom for us to express our position. In no way, shape or form would the Australia Day Council or councillor, myself or anyone for that matter, tell or not tell our Aboriginal people what to bring to the parade. They're entitled to do whatever they like, just like any other Australian can do exactly what they like. The opportunity for the parade is to display the many aspects of multiculturalism in our society. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve. And I've, I've felt very warm at heart, and I felt that we were starting to head in the right direction. I understand what Councillor Martin's trying to do, but this is a federal discussion, and this is a very sensitive topic that is happening federally, where there is significant community engagement in that space about what happens. I can tell you from a National Australia Day perspective, but also from a federal government perspective. And this is a significant day. Uh, for us to be able to have that discussion. But I'd also like to note, um, Councillor Martin did have a previous position to this, and I'm not sure if this position has changed or not, but that's a separate discussion. He did recognise prior to this that this was a federal issue in 2015 and comments he made, um, and now he's bringing it back to the Chamber. My worry with this is just the timing, and also I think this issue needs to be led by Indigenous communities by Aboriginal communities where they can connect with council and tell us what they want to see. They have every opportunity through the Reconciliation Committee and the advice that we have received every single time is they want to see more recognition on the day. There's been a delivery of a smoking ceremony that was attended by more than 500 people at six o'clock in the morning at Elder Park, an incredible display of support. Uh, there has been many projects and engagements during the day. The actual parade itself was attended by and led by Indigenous leaders. The opening of Australia Day in the city on the stage was opened and blessed by Indigenous leaders. They have taken lead on this issue and we want to hear more from them. And I think it's a matter that they need to lead and it's a matter they need to find a solution for. And we'll be always here to advocate and listen to all our community. So look, I'd ask members please to be mindful of all of that and be respectful of all of that and to not support this current recommendation. Um, Councillor Sims. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I am seconding this motion and um, supporting uh, the motion in recognition of the fact that I think public sentiment around this has been evolving over the last few years. I take on board your point, uh, Lord Mayor, around consideration of this um, by the Reconciliation Committee in, in 2017. There has been significant public debate um, since that time. Um, and I think I totally agree that this should be driven um, by Aboriginal people. Um, and I think asking the Reconciliation Committee their view is an appropriate thing to do, given the intense focus that's been in the media during the uh, lead up to Australia Day um, most recently. I do want to put on record um, how impressed I was, uh, like Councillor Martin and many others, by um, the 
uh, way in which uh, Aboriginal culture was included in the Australia Day um, ceremonies uh, celebration this year. I, I thought that was really terrific to see. Uh, but the fact remains that you know, Australia Day for many Aboriginal people is not a day of celebration, but it is a day of mourning because it marks the beginning of significant human rights abuse, the stealing of land, the stealing of children, um, and um, killing of innocent people. Uh, and so on that basis, you know, I've always, uh, and I'm on the public record advocating over a long period of time for um, the date to be changed so that we can find a time that all Australians can celebrate um, and uh, one that isn't associated with a day of, of mourning um, of uh, our First Nations people. So um, obviously this should be driven by Aboriginal people. What Councillor Martin has proposed is sending this back to the Reconciliation Committee and um, on that basis I'm happy to support that. Thank you Councillor Sims. Would any, are there any other speakers to this motion? Councillor Connell? I would just like to put a very short comment to it. I thought too that the, uh, the ceremonies, etc., were really amazing, and that uh, you know how we were able to integrate, or how they were able, which we would do it, their, their integration into that, uh, the event, and being able to lead it, and starting to recognise that special place they have, and none of that uh, uh, will change what has happened to them in the past as individuals or as as, as nations around uh, around Australia. But I think no matter which day we choose to celebrate our Australian. Uh, those sort of feelings will be uh, there for those who, who have that, uh, you know, the neg negative connotations, and all of that good which we, as a community, are trying to do, will still have a, a, a number that will not uh, recognise that we are trying to be more integrated and that we do show and respect, uh, you know, their culture. So I think. Um, again, uh, uh, those uh, conversations should be led by the Ghana people and not necessarily by us here. Um, and I think the way, whatever day we celebrate, uh, you know, that still doesn't change uh, any uh, issues they have. But I think what we have done is certainly gone a long way to actually uh, recognising that and uh, using that as part of our Australianness which I think for all of us uh, who come from elsewhere, uh, uh, you know, start to can identify with, and I think that's really brilliant, and I can't support uh, that as its current stand. Thank you. Is there any other members wish to speak to this motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I actually think Councillor Abbott and I are on the same page here. What he's saying is, that this is something that should be driven by the Ghana people, that we should listen to what they have to say. That is what this motion does. It simply says to the Ghana people, tell us what you think. Nothing more, nothing less. And I do disagree with him about one thing, that is uh, he hopes that somewhere there'll always be a celebration on the 26th of January. The 26th of January has no relevance to South Australia. It is the day on which the country was invaded by British troops on the East Coast. There's no, no geographical connection, whatever. But its most uh, odious connection for Indigenous people is that it marks the beginning of what was for them, many say, uh, a decline, a genocide. Um, so I, I would hope that the 26th isn't celebrated, but what I am interested in hearing is the discussion. Uh, because as I said at the beginning, there are so many views within the Indigenous community. And one of the things that Councillor Canole touched on was that um, uh, Indigenous people um, had this uh, uh, amazing affection for the cultural diversity within Australia. Uh, and a couple of people I spoke to on the night were saying to me, they just love the cultural diversity that's occurred in this country in the last hundred years. They want to celebrate that. They want a day when all of us can say, isn't it great to be Australian? Now, they're not certain how we get there. They're not certain what the day is. And frankly, neither am I. All this is intended to do is to say, let's have a discussion. Now, to your point, Lord Mayor, that this is the same reconciliation committee, it is not. Um, every member of the city has changed. You are now the chair, not the previous Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims is a member of the reconciliation committee, Councillor Donovan, 
uh, and there's one more, please remind me. Uh, Councillor Martin, 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 what I said is that the Ghana members of the reconciliation... I understand that, Lord Mayor. Uh, I do understand that, but I'm saying to you that part of the membership of, of that has changed, and my expectation is that the dynamic has changed. And this uh, may well be the opportunity for uh, a new council, uh, led by you, Lord Mayor, who I know has a, a great interest in this matter, a great personal interest. It may lead to a productive discussion and some documents, some reports, some address, some way uh, to inform this council about what the Ghana people think, about what they want to see ahead. Maybe not next year, maybe not the year after, maybe not for 10 years, but I want to know what they're thinking, and that's not an unreasonable thing. Um, and so I, I would ask uh, members just to support what is, after all, the most respectful thing we can do, and just say to the Ghana people, tell us what you think. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, I now ask you to vote on that motion. Those in favour? Those against? Uh, that is lost. Uh, members, do we have any motions without motions? No, if not, I'll go to uh, item number 13, which is the exclusion of the public councillors. There's two items uh, presented with a request for consideration in confidence. Each item, of course, requires a motion decision to order. If I could have a mover and a seconder for the motion for item 14.1.1, Councillor Canole, seconded by Councillor Kerrow. Uh, uh, Councillor, would you wish to sum up? Councillor Canole? Uh, could I ask those to vote, please? Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Councillors, could I have a mover and a seconder for the motion 14.2.1? Councillor Moran, and a seconder, please? Councillor Kerrow? Uh, Councillor Moran? Do you wish to sum up on motion? <laughs> Thank you. Um, if we could vote thanks, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members of the gallery and staff, thank you for your attendance at this meeting. Uh, those not associated with items 14.1.1 and 14.2.1, can you please now leave the chamber while council considers the final two items on the agenda. Thank you for attending.
tonight. If I could have the doors unlocked, please, and the meeting reopened to the public. Before you leave the chamber, councillors. Thank you, councillors. There are no other items of business. I declare the meeting closed.